Hey my friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? Did you notice my spiffy pelican friend over here? We are in Pensacola, Florida today, and there are a handful of really cool, famous houses and historic places here that I'd like to show you today. So I thought, that's what we'll do. We're gonna actually start off, well, I'm gonna show you where I stayed just in case you want a really cool place to stay. This place is like, this really made a great night experience for me. And oh yeah, Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. This is where I stayed. This is the Pensacola Victorian Bed and Breakfast. And wow, what a house. I mean, it really feels like you are trapped in the Victorian era. The lady that runs it is so nice and friendly and accommodating and just a great experience. They do Now, I've stayed in places like this before, and a lot of times they don't have any TVs in the room. This one actually does. So if that's like a deal breaker for you that you do or don't want a television, just letting you know, this place was great. Just so you get a feel of what the house really looks like. Some of the amazing architecture to it. Just look at the front. I mean, that that's amazing, that glass. Now I'm gonna take you to the house just over there. So here's the house we were looking for. Now, just to let you know, Pensacola is a heavily, like a navy town. And I had read years ago that this house was here. See, it's called the Morrison Family Homestead. And I had seen that one of the Morrison relatives was listing it for sale. I don't know what it is now. Um, it looks like it's like a business, but I walked by it last night and it also looked like people were living in it. But <laughs> they were listing it for sale, advertising it as the house that Jim Morrison of the Doors was conceived in. I kid you not. Kind of cool to see these old things out here. But yes, if you read the sign, it says constructed in 1906 by Mabel Lewis. This frame vernacular structure was the home of generations of the Morrison family, including the parents of James Douglas, Jim Morrison, the lead singer of The Doors. Before Robert Bruce, R.B., and Francis Morrison purchased the building in 1932, it had been used as a tea house and as a speakeasy during Prohibition. Huh. No, I mean, that's kinda, that kind of fits in with a Jim Morrison type story, doesn't it? In 1942, R.B. offered the basement apartment to his cousin George Stephen, Steve Morrison, and his wife Clara Clark Morrison while in Pensacola. Steve, a U.S. Naval Academy graduate, completed his flight training at Naval Air Station. Steve and Clara moved to Melbourne, Florida a few months before Jim was born on December 8th, 1943. And I actually have vlogged that house in Melbourne, if you're interested, it, the house that Jim Morrison was born in. And um, it says, Steve Morrison was a highly decorated naval officer who became a rear admiral in 1966 after attending Florida State University and graduating from the University of California at Los Angeles. Jim Morrison, a gifted singer and lyricist, became a legendary and mysterious rock star. He died in Paris in 1971. We've also vlogged where that was. The Morrison home was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1970 part of the downtown Pensacola Historic District and was occupied by members of the Morrison family until 2014. So that would have been when that listing was when I saw. So the great Jim Morrison would have been conceived not only in this house, but actually in this basement. So right down in there. I guess thank God for that. Otherwise we wouldn't have all the great music and great lyric poetry. It's really a big place. I mean, honestly, the, I, I can't even imagine how many rooms are in it, but it's a pretty big, pretty deep place. It goes pretty far back, but really cool. What a piece of history. Jim Morrison's family lineage all lived here and he was, he was conceived here. Gotta love it. So we're at the Park Plaza Ferdinand, and it's a historical place because it was actually built by the British, and it served as parade grounds for their troops 
until the Spanish regained control of the region and they renamed it. And then this is also the site where the Spanish seceded Florida to the United States and General Andrew Jackson was sworn in as the Florida's first territorial governor. Now if we walk over here, there's actually a statue to Jackson over here and a couple of cannons. It says, in this plaza, General Andrew Jackson received West Florida from Spain and raised the flag of the U.S. July 17th, 1821. To recall the flags of five nations which have been raised in turn ten times over Pensacola, Spain, France, Great Britain, United States, and the Confederate United States. And over here you can see a couple of cannons like I mentioned. Pretty historical place, think of that. British built this and we're having parades here. Wow. Here you'll notice it says, Pensacola, Florida, America's first settlement trail. I love this little section of town. It kind of reminds me of New Orleans, being in Louisiana. So here we have the Pensacola Museum of History, which used to be the old city hall, apparently. They have a plaque right out front that says, the road to the 19th amendment, votes for women, state and national suffragists, including Lavinia Engel, spoke at Pensacola Equal Suffrage League meetings here at City Hall, 1914 to 1919. And then if you look over here, it says Officer's Room, Colonial Archaeological Trail. Let's read these placards up here, find out what this is all about. So they're showing it on here, and they're saying that the British constructed the officer's room and kitchen inside the western gate at Fort of Pensacola in 1775. So this is where that would have been. Kitchen served troops stationed in the nearby blockhouse located along the fort wall. Look, it's another one of those amazing seagulls that we saw at the beginning of the video. This one's much different, kind of Mayan. This art gallery here must have been the old fire station because look at the mural that they painted over here on the wall. This is just amazing. I saw it from across the street. Isn't that great? Look, their buddy's ready for action too. Here was the old theater. Pensacola Little Theater, one of the oldest community theaters in this area, and they have all kinds of stars to different groups. We're actually heading down this way for our next stop. Lots of stars though. I didn't really recognize any of them, that's why I'm not pointing any out in particular. Now, if you remember years ago when I went to El Paso, I did a vlog showing where John Wesley Harden, this famous outlaw from like the 1800s, had shot someone, had been apprehended and everything where he was killed, and then I went out and showed his grave. We actually are gonna see a spot located here ties into John Wesley Harden. Wow, look at that. No, I mean, seriously, it says it. Look at it. This is just some cool art along the way. Not what I was looking for. Now we're going up here to where these trains are. We're here on the same corner where the Museum of Industry is. John Wesley Harden was apprehended. Texas fugitive John Wesley Harden was captured here on August 23rd, 1877. Harden was wanted and dangerous, and his capture became national news that brought notoriety to Pensacola. Harden had reportedly killed 27 men. I've seen some places where they thought 
he had killed upward of 70. He bragged he had killed 40 men, all in self-defense, including one for snoring too loud. Texas Rangers, Lieutenant John B. Armstrong and Jack R. Duncan, along with the Sheriff of Escambia County, which is this county, uh, William Hutchinson and nine deputies apprehended Hardin and his associates at the l and Freight Depot as they boarded a train bound for Pollard, Alabama. When approached by Sheriff Hutchinson, Hardin tried to draw a revolver, but was overpowered. What I had read was that it got hung up in his suspenders when he tried to pull it out. A deputy Martin Sullivan shot and killed one of Hardin's accomplices. As he tried to escape, Hardin was returned to Texas and found guilty of killing Comanche County Deputy Charles Webb. He was sentenced to 25 years in the Texas State Penitentiary, but was pardoned after serving 17 years by Governor James Stephen Hogg and thereafter practiced law in El Paso. On August 9, 1895, Hardin was shot and killed while playing dice in El Paso. And that was what we vlogged where he was shot and killed and so you can actually still see the train tracks here he was actually on that train and that would have been the depot that he was apprehended at all right captain jack nice boat joe and patty so this was the childhood home of one of the all-time greats Hall of Famer, College Hall of Famer, three-time Super Bowl champ, Super Bowl MVP, regular season MVP, Emmett Smith, the great Emmett Smith from the Dallas Cowboys. He is such a great dude and he would, has always throughout his career told stories about his dad and this was his dad's house. Emmett grew up here with him and uh, like just a couple years ago he came back and did like a secret celebrity renovation show and renovated his his old childhood home for his dad so kind of cool he was saying that his dad was just an exceptional football player when he was a young man and had like they said he was the greatest in the area and then had an injury to his knee and could no longer play so he didn't even want Emmett to play because he didn't want Emmett to end up having something like that happen where he would you know like lose his dream the way his dad did but his Emmett's mom was a big fan of football and she really encouraged Emmett to be great and Emmett even said he would go play football so much um, after school and everything he would come home with dirty clothes his mom finally yelled at him and said like she didn't she was gonna beat him if he didn't <laughs> quit doing that so he started turning his clothes inside out and would play in them and then come home but so cool to see where his childhood home was he was a star basketball player and football player and actually took his high school team to two championships they named the football field here after him i mean just a really cool story and it was cool to see on that show i found a little clip of it where he was actually out here working on his dad's house seeing emmett smith work on his dad's house was really cool he said he he was really happy with his career especially because his dad told him that he lived out all of his dad's fantasies of football what a great dude, huh? And Emmett is uh, putting money back into Pensacola. This was his, his home growing up and everything, so he's trying to invest his money into revitalizing the area. That was his, uh, his dad's house, I believe, till he passed away, and, and his dad just passed away like a week or two ago, at the age of 78. Emmett said he was always a really gifted football player and basketball player, but he said he quit playing basketball even though he loved it because the coach told him, hey, you might as well go and join track and field because I think you'll be so good at football. I don't want you to get hurt on my watch. I think you'd be better off doing track and field and doing things that will strengthen your abilities for football. So that's why he quit playing basketball. I wanna go over to his high school now. And where he went to high school was not, not very close to his house. It was, it's at least 10 minutes away driving. Look at that mural. It's funny, Emmett went to Escambia High School. Their mascot was the Gators. And then he also went to University of Florida, which were also the Gators. And then became a cowboy. So over here you can see the field is named after Emmett Smith. And that's the field he played on. Set a record for second all-time rushing scoring in all of the US. Isn't that crazy? Then he set, he went to uh, play for the Gators. University of Florida, 
and set records there and then went on to surpass Walter Payton's rushing record for the NFL. It all kind of started there. All right, I think we got one more stop for the day. Another historical home. And it's not Roman Reigns' childhood home. My girlfriend brought that up. She's like, you know Roman Reigns is from Pensacola? Yeah, I know, but I'm not a fan of Roman Reigns. Sorry. The house coming up in front of us is the last house we're going to see today. The historic home site of General Daniel Chappie James. The first African-American general. They actually do tours of the home and they have a museum and everything. Pretty cool. Looks like this is the end of the tour when you take it. Now they do have a plaque outside you can read up on some of his history, but he also they also have a flight academy. I believe it's a youth flight academy. And take a look at this. There's a little dirty, but what it says is Chappie's first steps, 1920. <laughs> Pretty cool. It says the house on the left is the birthplace of the first African American four star general Daniel Chappie James Jr. The steps on the right are the remnants of the private school run by his mother, Miss Lily James, where he received his earliest education. General James was among the dedicated, determined young men who enlisted to become America's first black military airman. At a time when many people thought black men lacked intelligence, skill, courage, and patriotism, he is listed on the official roster of Tuskegee Airmen, pilot graduates, and trained pilots for the famed all-black 99th Pursuit Squadron. He was awarded the Distinguished Service Medal, Legion of Merit, and the Distinguished Flying Cross. General James was ultimately assigned as Commander-in-Chief of the North American Defense Command, NORAD, and Aerospace Defense Command, ADCOM, having responsibility for all facets of air defense in the United States and Canada. So again, that was his first steps for the school. His mom taught at. Looks like someone has put the address or something down here. And then, of course, the house that we saw. And up the driveway, they also have a flag and memorial. Let's check that out. This office, I believe, is where you start the tour into the house. And then right in front of it, they have this. Chappie, General Daniel James Jr., America's first African American four star general. Well, my friends, we're going to call it a day here in Pensacola, Florida. I hope you enjoyed our tour and thank you all for watching. If you're new here, please hit the like button, please subscribe, and please ring the bell for notifications. We will see you all next time. Have a great night and goodbye.